Hello Grinder School Colossus and I'm playing another multi table full ring session uh here at full tilt. Today I'm playing five and all. Um myself I'm not a big favorite to play as low as five and all, uh especially anything lower than five and all I would consider uh here uh Kyle Limpton, um, I'm gonna call once on that, on this, uh, see the turn card. The guy seems r really needy with uh, 12 of 10 stacks and he was really wanting to put in money, so I'm putting him like on a set more than likely. Uh, I'm gonna call once more. And I'm gonna check this behind, there is like really no uh, point in. And apparently he was completely uh, bluffing there. I don't know why he decided to bluff in that spot. Oh, by the way, after this session I will do a hand history review as I did last time and was apparently appreciated by uh, members at Grinder School. So as I was saying, uh, this this takes. 5 and all uh, stakes is really as low as I would go. Anything lower, and you're not playing poker anymore. The games will play like play money, and you will pick up or either not not evolve yourself as a poker player. You can definitely make a decent pro. Well, you can you can make a profit at these really really micro stakes games, but if you want to evolve as a poker player. I would not recommend uh, playing 5 and all or anything below. Um, and I would just deposit like deposit $100 more and um, immediately start out at the 10 and all games. Uh, watch some videos before you do and make sure you've got a decent understanding of the game and start playing at at least at 5 and all, um, if possible, uh, I would go immediately uh, to 10 and all. So, with that being said, we can uh, start playing here. I raised uh, up King Queen. Uh, we've got a caller. Uh, we flopped top pair, medium kicker. I'm betting there for value. You can definitely uh, sometimes check behind there uh, if you think you're never gonna get called by anything worse. But I think I think at five and all stakes, uh, the money is going to come from uh, betting your uh, good hands. Uh, pretty fast. Uh, I'm gonna take a piece of paper so I can write down which hands I want to review. I know Poker Tracker has. Um, you can mark hands for review, but when the, ta uh, when the tables are jumping this fast as uh, they will be when I'm uh, ten tabling, it's hard to mark hands for review as the table will uh, jump away once I've once I've acted. So we got pocket queens, and some pretty standard folds. I know it's probably not as easy for all members to follow the action uh, on uh, ten tabling, but uh, rest assured that I will uh, do an analysis afterwards. Ace five suited here. It's only a min raise, but the guy has like no money behind, and um, it's really not worth it to uh, call there with Ace five suited on the button. Or even uh, definitely not three bets. Uh, seven ten suited. The guy on the button is, seems pretty tight, and the players in the blinds uh, seem well. We don't. Uh, I don't really have any reads, but uh, I think the button was tight enough to uh, warrant a raise there with seven ten suited. And people at these stakes usually don't uh, three bet really loose, so I think I think you can get away with opening up. A bit more hands in a uh, late position as the button will not take uh, advantage of you all that often. 
if, if, if it's really the case that uh, the player on your left is giving you a hard time, uh, you might as well just switch tables at these stakes. It doesn't matter. You don't have to adjust here. Folding ace jack suit, it seems nitty, but we are out of position and the risk comes from a guy with 17-8 uh, uh, stats. So we're just gonna get ourselves into trouble post flop. Uh, King nine here, offsuit on the button. We've got uh, either some dunk, uh, probably a limper. Uh, I'm definitely iso raising here with King nine off uh, on the button. Standard folds, Queen Jack, standard fold under the gun. Uh, please don't open it. Uh, A6 suited. Uh, well, middle position, it's a little bit too weak uh, to open up. Especially at 5 and L, where I believe that you will get a high number of callers. Uh, here, 6 7 suited. Uh, the guy is fully stacked. We can definitely 3 bet here once just to check out uh, what they're going to do. I myself have never, never played the 5 and L stakes. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see how the play goes. Although I expect that, that there will not be this much difference between 5 and L and 10 and L. And apparently people still limp fold because the hands uh, didn't come back. Here again, uh, some guy limped in, but I have 310 off suits, uh, which is not a really good hand. We probably have a calling station on the, on the button and in the blind, so 310 off suit is really too weak to ice race. Definitely uh, raising up Ace Jack's uh, off suit there after the button limps in. And uh, definitely uh, a lot of bad players at these sticks. Uh, I'm uh, raising here tanking suit, uh, the guy is in it. Uh, here we hit. Uh, uh, you can make a case for checking this behind, you can make a case for betting. I think you can go either way. Um, I'm, I'm betting that flop with my entire range, the ace high flop, whether I hit or miss. Well, sometimes if I hit, I might even check it back, uh, depending on the strength of my ace. Uh, on the other hand, you can all... You can also wonder if people at these stakes uh, are thinking uh, as far as I had as I would uh, that I actually might uh, that I actually bet that flop with my entire range, so they should be calling me lighter, but I don't know if they really think this far. Again, limper as uh, all standard situations, ace 10 uh, offsuit on the button. Uh, what's Okay, so we ISO raised with A stand. Flop is really bad. I mean, this hits his limp calling range way too often, so I'm not even gonna bother C betting. Plus, we have the back door, uh, not flush draw, so if a spade comes off, it would, uh, it would be nice. And so we have Ace high, so we actually might still have the best hand. I'm gonna check again here. No point in betting. Uh, we still get checked. We uh, might still have the best hand. He's never folding a pair. I'm not representing anything by that. Although I don't think he really uh, thinks about it. So I'm gonna... Because you guys, I know you guys like to see showdowns. So I will write down the hand and I will show what he had after the session. Queen Jack suited. Looks really good, but we are under the gun. So I'm just gonna fold it here. 
Uh, Ace four. There is a lot of that money on those pots. Uh, the guys. This is a donkey playing for seventy five. So I'm gonna raise it up, especially with uh, that money in the pot from some guy who donk posted. So. A6 offsuit again, guy limps in, standard situation, I think this happened now like 4 or 5 times in this uh, short uh, game. Oh, yeah, wow, I run good. Um, you can make a case for checking behind, you can make a case for betting. Uh, I am betting. Uh, but I'm gonna bet like small. These people interpret maybe small bets as uh, weakness. And I also stole that so things get better and better. Um, uh, once he called me on the, on, the, uh, on the flop, I doubt that he uh, folds to a turn bet. And I want to get all the money in, so that's why I bet, decided to bet this big on the turn. And um, let's just put them all in. Uh, what hand was this? A6. I will go over it after the uh, session to give a little bit more explanation as to uh, bet sizing. Um, we get called by the big blind. He's really short. If he has a 7, so be it. Uh, I mean, I'm never falling here against probably a donkey. Uh, so. I don't have to bet really big on the flop either. Um, pretend that I'm weak and uh, hopefully that he bluff shoves or anything. Oh, we got a table breaking up. I'm not gonna play. Uh, I'm not gonna play. Um, let me just finish this hand because we flopped top pair, top kicker. Uh, what am I saying? Top pair. I will bring it up again just a minute, just to, because I'm playing the hand here. Uh, we flopped up there. I see people sometimes checking back. Uh, I'm betting here for value. I expect to get worse, but call by worst. Uh, there were enough draws out. If I get raised, we have an easy fold with the 10 jack. Um, this is just a heads up. Okay, and now uh, the worst card in the deck comes off an ace, and we just have to fold against the nits playing 9 6. Anyway, uh, not important. I'm raising up aces here. We get three bet by a guy who never three bets. He's raising like two percent. Uh, easy fold with King Jack suited. Uh, what happened here? I open up uh, nines. Uh, blue. I'm gonna bet for value. Good enough uh, draws to warrant a bet there for value. Plus the guy is short. Um, this is a really crappy flop. If I get raised on this flop, I'm falling uh, my pocket aces. It sucks, but hey, so be it. Uh, I'm check calling there with the pocket nines. Let me uh, write down the hand so we can go over there after the session. Here uh, we got called. Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody can see that this is the worst card in deck. I have to check fold uh, or see at least what he bets. Uh, here I'm calling. Um, and the king comes off, which is not a bad card. Uh, if he bets here. Uh, uh, I'm probably falling here. We have just have to fold. I mean, I'm never good again. against the guy who's playing six six. This is interesting. The tip is like sixty five cents. Um, either he has a misdraw or a ten. We're cutting. Uh, I have to think fast. I think we can fold it. It's close. It's really close. Um, and the problem with stacking the tables is that I cannot uh, coordinate my actions by folding already the cr uh, crappy hands. But anyway, uh, it was pretty close there. Uh, I don't see people really betting the rivers uh, often. As a bluff, uh, I mean. Uh, 
Uh, Ace nine here. We've got the donkey who uh, min raising. We got another donkey calling. I'm gonna call here. If I hit an ace, I think I'm pretty good. Uh, uh, and it was only like we were getting like more than one and five. So I'm not going broke either if I hit an ace. Uh, well, depending on the board texture. I have to uh, fill in another table. See, okay. I'm actually gonna fit in uh, two more. Oh, I'm sorry for this. Jump table. Come on. I right hear set mining. Um, Set mining didn't work. It's kind of annoying to f uh, have to fit in other tables during a session, especially when I'm stacking the tables. But excuse me, guys, for this. Um, and there's a misclick here with the pocket force, obviously. I was. Okay, we can fold this, fold this, we can fold, fold, ace 5, fold, 9, 3, all fold. And as you can see, I mean, I'm playing 11 tables and we still have uh, quite a lot of that time uh, in between. Just because these games tend to play really slow. Uh, King 10 off suits. Just, uh, I'm gonna raise it up. That was really moody also. Probably some bad players uh, in the blinds, uh, especially when they're playing like with only 20 big blinds. Of course, uh, the 39 guy, uh, Super Nits, decides 3 bets. Uh, and we can't call there with King 10 off. Uh, we're dominated by everything in his range. Fold, fold, fold. Uh, pocket threes, we got uh, three bets. The guy is fully stacked. <sighs> I don't like calling here. We have position though. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna fold. Here I'm gonna isolate the donkey. His queen, definitely. Oh, definitely isolating here. I think I will call this video the ISO raising video. That seems what we are doing. Ah, but we got a very famous limp re raise, even over limp, which uh, is kind of weird to me. Especially because people tend to, um, I have to, I'm gonna ex mark this hand, and uh, I know I shoved in uh, Ace Queen there, uh, don't worry. I, I will, we will not know the results uh, until I go over the session, so either I look like a complete idiot um, after uh, the hand, or, uh, or I don't. Uh, here, uh, again, um, still I'm not gonna. People make the war more weirdest plays at these stakes. And I get re raised. Uh, my hand is never good here anymore. Against the guy who's playing 41, never raises pre flop. I will, uh, uh, I will mark the hand too. Uh, I want to say something about it. I've mentioned it in previous videos, but I know sometimes you cannot stress certain things enough. Well, 
Okay, this hand is going all in here. Uh, this is this rigs like aces versus, but I'm not folding up to kings at five and all. Uh, actually, this was the table. Let's instantly see. I'm curious too as what they show up with. And he showed up with pocket queens and sucked out on us. Whee! Uh, pocket deuces. We got dunked into uh, nothing. Nothing I'm gonna do on that flop. I really don't like the way he played the queens by the way with four bending there. Yeah, first min raising pre flop down four bending. Well he played it completely wrong. Uh, for sure here. Uh this is close to a C bet. So uh, flop is try enough to warrant a C bet. Against one player I would definitely see bet against two it's a lot more close. Again, uh, standard isolation race. The, the limper is short, but he's in it, so I don't expect him to. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven. We uh, gonna. There is like almost no value. I'm just gonna bet smallish and hope to get called, a crying call by some two pair type hands. Uh, here we get dumped into. Oh no, this is the cigar. I just have to fold it now. We're not even getting the odds to call there, and when people dunk. Uh, especially people who are, are really passive pre-flop and they start betting, dunk betting on post-flop usually. Uh, it's not a good sign. Okay, nine fold versus under the gun race. A10 off suits. Uh, guys behind me are tight, so I'm gonna ice race uh, with A10 off suits. Here I'm falling. Oh, now I'm falling. Pocket deuces. Here definitely ice racing with Ace Queen. Uh, seven King. I didn't see the limper here. I uh, could have ice raised, but there's a shorty behind me. It's probably a dunk. He limped in now too. And King 7 is not like the best hand to be ice raising with. Here we ice raised. Uh, flop is nah, dry enough. And we, we do get equity with our two over cards. So I'm gonna try to take it down there. Ten eight. I ice raised again here. 10 8. <sighs> really not a good flop uh, to see that. Especially against two people. Now this guy goes all in uh, over, the, over the top. Ridiculous play. Here we got a ridiculous small 3 bet by a <laughs> out of position by some guy. Whatever. Checking, there's a donkey in, in the small blind, which which worries me here. Otherwise, I would treat that definitely. I'm still gonna try to do it though. Um, with five six off there, and hoping that the small blind. Uh, 
doesn't do anything stupid. But you can definitely fall there, especially with a small blind playing like 50% of his of his hands. Ah, uh, seven eight. So that's guy raises. Ah, uh, this button is going to come along, and he's gonna have position. So I'm just gonna fold the seven eight suit there. Pocket fives. Uh, super set mining situation under the gun raises. Well, everything. Well, everybody is fully stacked. So standard set mine. Uh, Uh, isolation race with pocket five. You can kill, you can also limp afterwards. I like to uh, I like to race uh, here. Uh, we get. Oh yeah, this was the pocket five hand. Uh, we missed, so uh, we're done with the hand. Again, we get pocket fives. Oh, stupid eye. Now I'm just gonna fall because the button is really uh, is apparently uh, here. I iso raised on with hit our set, so I'm definitely betting. Kings definitely raising, of course. We get called, which is nice. Uh, I want to get the money, and so I'm gonna make. If he calls, like uh, I don't expect him to fold really often unless he was like floating me light. So I'm just gonna bet enough so I can practically uh, shove the. Here. Uh, um, nice flop. Uh, I'm not falling here ever uh, if you get raised. I'm gonna. I want to talk about the one five five hands. So, uh, write it down. Yes. Uh, we do get raised. Oh wow! The guy is deep, which basically. Cruels. <sighs> Fuck. Um. Uh, I don't have time to think about it really. Um. I'm gonna re-raise. I have top pair. I have the second not flush draw. I don't. I didn't want to raise him big. I still want him to give him like some. Uh, I still want him to think that I can fold. Uh, although he, what he is doing is really strong. He doesn't want me to fold. Oh God damn it! I misclicked. <sighs> God, I hate stacking tables. I was clicking on the deal me in here on. Oh well. Maybe it's for the better one he shoves there. Uh, I don't think I'm really good off. So. Really, I'm serious. When you when you're playing yourself and you're of course you guys are not recording your play, don't stack the tables because you're gonna make mistakes like this by fitting the buttons over each other. It's like the worst way to play actually to melt the table. Uh, tanking here, a uh, guy who raises an unknown, I'm not gonna call, even though we are on the button, we're gonna be too dominated.
standard faults now. A6, uh, it's against the guy who. Oh, um, uh, you can raise here. I'm just gonna check behind because when I raise and an ace comes off, I'm never gonna get any money in. And he can have it. Mm. Oh, pretty standard faults again. Pocket jacks. I'm gonna play for one more minute and uh, then go over the uh, review. I think I will look like uh, an idiot because I don't see my stack up <laughs> on any table. But anyway, we got divided cat sucked out on with kings versus queens. Uh, Ace Jack. Oh, it's close. It's really close. I'm gonna raise it up. Not the best flop, but decent enough uh, to uh, see that here. We get three bet with the king ten off easy fold. Uh, good card, bad card. I'm torn in between because the guy is 11 11 and part of his range is uh, definitely flush draws. I can't give a free card, I have to bet fold here. Uh, We get dunked into smallish. I'm gonna raise it up. Uh, the guy did seem like a calling station there with the pocket force. But usually I have the feeling that these dunk bets are pretty weak. Uh, standard C bet here. Falling. Okay, and I'm. Uh, I think I have. Uh, I want to show this ace jack type of hand too. And maybe the. Okay, so. Uh, I'm gonna be back in one minute to go over some of the hands that uh, we just played. On. Okay guys, I'm back and let's go over some of the hands that I pointed out. First hand, we have ace 10 on the button. And as I've been doing a lot in this video, we are uh, ice raising uh, pretty wide. Uh, ace 10 of course is uh, definitely for value. Uh, you can already see uh, what villain actually... Uh, I can hide. I should do it for the other... Uh, I will hide the results and explain my thinking uh, along the way. So we are uh, raising for value now. This is really hits his limp calling range, uh, six, seven, uh, two tone board, a lot of straight draws, a lot of flush draws, uh, a lot of uh, one pair type of hands. And, uh, uh, he's not folding uh, small pocket pairs to one bet. So I decide to check behind. Uh, we have the back door not flush, which. Uh, does uh, come into play here um, and our ace high actually might uh, be the best hand. The 9 and uh, he checks again to us and once he checks again uh, to us here he uh, we probably have the best hands or he is afraid of the 9 and uh, has a pair of 7s although I see people uh, betting this uh, too often, so when we have the best hand here, I don't see any reason uh, to bet uh, on the turn. Uh, we can go to showdown, probably have the best hand. Once he checks, uh, definitely not betting river. I mean, what's the point if I'm betting the river? And as you can see, uh, the guys are limp calling with 10 3 suited, so this ISO raising uh, becomes uh, quite profitable uh, at these stakes.
Um, max to hands. Give me a second, guys. Okay, we have ace four suited. We are. Where are we? We've gone. We got the dunk poster uh, here on our left. Oh yeah, I remember this hand. Um, guy limps in. There's dead money in the pot. Uh, the guy is fully stacked, which also comes into play. The guy uh, who who limped in. Uh, he is a donkey though. Only over seven hands. Though, so we are not for sure. Uh, we are not sure. I am uh, raising here, and as you can see, what happens is everybody falls, and I pick up like. Uh, Three and a half uh, big blinds, I guess. One, uh, three and a half big blinds, which is quite considerable. Uh, if you if your win rate is like uh, three and a half big blinds per hundred hands, uh, you're not doing uh, you're not doing bad. Uh, you're doing uh, good. Uh, so uh, I'm just made uh, the profit of one hundred hands uh, here. Uh, next. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong button. There are quite a few hands I want to go over with. Uh, okay, I don't know. I have a six apparently. I don't don't remember this hand. Again, ah, again a limper from the cutoff. I isolate. I expect yes. And a call. Oh yes, and we hit uh, the nuts. Uh, yes, now I remember. And um, actually, I bet a little bit too small here. I don't like my bet sizing. I could definitely make it uh, thirty cents here. I shouldn't make it thirty cents. Although twenty-five cents is still okay. And the reason why it's okay is that we he's not fully stacked, and I'm never I'm never folding in the hand, no matter what comes off. Uh, I mean, there's like no card which uh, we, which we are afraid of. So I bet he calls, and there's now 79 cents in the pot, and there's two. It's a little bit less than three dollars uh, behind. So if I bet like uh, 80 cents here, uh, well, well, the pot will be big enough uh, to uh, shove it in uh, on the river, and that's what I do. I've even 75 cents uh, is uh, enough to have a pot size bet left on the river. Uh, which I do, unfortunately, he does fold, so I don't know what he really has, probably like something like pockets, a pocket pair that just didn't, uh, that, yeah, actually, some pocket pair, I guess, I mean, I, I don't see anything else. Pockets, anything between pocket fours, pocket fives, maybe pocket sevens, I guess. So, uh, I had no hands on the guy, only three hands, so it's anybody's guess. Um, just to uh, show you guys that bet sizing is quite important, because you can lose a lot of money. If you don't get villain stack when you should have gotten villain stacks, wait a minute, because I am showing commercials for Acer, and that's not the point of this video. Uh, I mean, well, you're losing money when you should have gotten villain stack in certain hands. Uh, and I have to be careful uh, what I say because this is not always true. As you want to put your villains on a range, but um, I have to, I will come back to that. Uh, here, pocket nines. Um, Standard race from under the gun. Yes, I think uh, I made a mistake in this hand. So uh, the flop comes four, seven, ten. I see, but which I don't mind. Um, there's so many draws, so many worse hands. He will call with seven X. He's calling me with uh, eight, nine, five, six, six, nine, uh, six, eight. Uh, I mean, <laughs> of course, ten X is also calling me with. Uh, there's a whole range of hands he's coming with that I beat, so I uh, bet the turn is a good turn card, uh, only 5-6 got there. Uh, I check it to him, uh, and he bets like 35 cents, and at this point, 
uh, I can I can cancel like 10x out of his range uh, just because he would he would bet bigger. Uh, he supposedly uh, should bet bigger uh, if he has 10x, um, especially on this draw heavy board. So my hand is probably good here, and I can pro probably either check call on the river or uh, even check shove here. I make him pay for his draws. Uh, I uh, opt to check call, which I like, and actually here uh, we're getting like three to one, even three point five to one, on a call here. And I think uh, if he really has it, he probably jams it in. We have again, we have no reads like four hands. I never played five and now, so I can't really see. Let's think about its range. Five six would probably jam this river to get paid off. I mean, I think he missed his draw, and uh, definitely not ten x because ten x would have been better bigger on the turn. So either he hit the king, which is possible. So I mean, uh, this is this uh, should have been a call here. Uh, if we think about its range next. Next, 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 okay. Oopla. A queen. Ah, I think this was the hand. Do I look like an idiot or don't I? We have a limper, we have an over limper, and we've got a call standard from donkeys, and then we get the three bet, and I instantly just set aces or kings, and then I was thinking. If he has aces or kings, wouldn't he have raised after some guy already limped in? And that was my thinking uh, after my secondary thinking, uh, because usually people limp in aces or kings when they are first in the pot, because if they are afraid that if they raise and everybody falls, they didn't get enough value of their aces or kings. But when somebody limps in, they know they will not probably not fall preflop, and they still raise up their ace uh, kings, and that's why I just uh, shoved it in there. Uh, Knowing that both guys are pretty bad, I actually shoved it in for a uh, value, so not as a bluff then. Um, I do get called, uh, and I do look like an idiot because the guy shows up. The one guy shows up with ace jack, which is good, and the other guy showed up with kings, but as you can see, we uh, sucked out for the splits, uh, and the kings lost. So, but I just want to say that in this hand, my. F you can definitely fall because like limp three bets is like aces of kings at, at these stakes apparently always or in a ten and all the same uh, I just didn't want to believe it now just because the guy um, didn't raise after somebody already limped uh, before him anyway next hands what is this we have ten jack uh, again iso race standard iso race uh, top pair, top kicker, uh, some bloody guy who is 41 0 uh, bets into me like small. He never has a 10, uh, he would bet bigger. Uh, so I'm raising it up for value. He calls, shitty card comes up, uh, he bets 5 cents. I cannot, I cannot call this bet because I mean, I mean, we're practically giving a free card to a spade to come off. So I raise, and then when we get re raised here, I mean, insta fault. He, he got there with, uh, with his flush. Uh, somebody who's 41-0, you are never ever good here. Uh, people who are like pre-flop lose passive and then post-flop start having uh, imaginary lines, like uh, aggressive imaginary lines. Uh, you might as well give them credit and just fold. You're gonna save yourself uh, some money. Ace Jack offsuit on the gun. I raise it up, which is kind of iffy. And what happened? We got a caller. Uh, I bet, and oh yeah, this is what I want to talk about. He calls. Uh, guy is 13, 13, quite needy. The Ace of Diamonds comes off, and please, people, don't don't check this to him. I mean, checking here is allowing him to play perfectly against you. I mean. You don't want, you don't really don't want to give a free card on uh, this flop. So I'm, I, I already made up my mind. I'm bad folding here. Uh, 
Well, in this case, he folded, but I see too many people checking here. But with another diamond coming off, he has a, another reason, uh, more reason to call to call another pet, just because he might have like a uh, uh, king. Uh, yeah, he might have like king queen with the king of diamonds, and uh, he's gonna call another pet uh, for sure uh, with that hand. So. But probably he doesn't have King Queen of Diamonds here. But I mean, you know what I mean. Don't give free cards there just because you're afraid to get raised off. If you get raised off there, just fold. I mean, there's no shame in folding there. Last hand I wanted to go over with is Pocket Force. Let's check it out. Happens. Oh, yeah. Uh, I raise on the button. Uh, small blind calls. And small blind donks out 15 cents into 35 cents. He's never doing this with a jack. Uh, he would protect his jack. This is more like... Something they saw in some video about feeler bets and knowing where you are. Uh, I have complete air, no showdown value. Uh, I just raise it up uh, smallish. Don't have to be really raise it up big. I mean, and he insta folds. Uh, he has like a pair of deuces, a pair of fives maybe, and uh, or some two over cards. And just want to see if I uh, connected to this flop. Okay, so this was Colossus for another Grinder School video. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the forums and I will get to them. See you guys.